Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Elegant 5 inch Bind and Fly quadcopter from Gepper C. This quadcopter is using the Elegant KX 5 inch frame and I've already previously reviewed it but unfortunately I didn't have enough time to feature it on a build video. Luckily enough Gepper C chose to feature it as a plug and play and also as a Bind and Fly version and in this video I'm going to check it out. The Bind and Fly version comes with an FR Sky RX SR receiver and it costs $269 and the plug and play version costs $259 and it doesn't come with any receiver so we'll have to provide you own one. Of course, if you have an FR Sky remote controller, it's recommended to get the Bind and Fly version because adding $10 for an FR Sky RX SR receiver is a pretty good deal. So let's have a look what we're getting inside the box. First of all, we're getting the instructions manual for the RX SR receiver since this is the Bind and Fly version. In addition, we're getting this pamphlet, which is the user manual. This quadcopter is using the new Spen Tower, so you can see over here the specifications. Because this is a Bind and Fly version, and also in the Plug and Play version, you're not going to mess with the wiring, but it shows you all the details. Next, we can find the quadcopter. So, as you can see, everything is assembled, and because this is the Bind and Fly version, we can also find the RXSR receiver on the bottom. We also get in another Pagoda antenna with an SMA antenna connector. Another Pagoda antenna with an M6 connector is already connected on the quadcopter. And on the bottom of the package, we can find nine pairs of Gepper C propellers. And they're being very generous to give you this amount of propellers. And normally when you buy a set of quadcopter, you only get two sets. So nine pairs is a lot. You can also find some stickers, this frequency table, and also this bag of accessories which contains three Velcro straps. So you can use one for the battery and another one you can use with your GoPro Session 5 or your OneCom 3 if you're lucky enough to have one. In addition, we get in another straw for the antenna, four 3D printed Moto TPU protectors, two battery anti-skid stickers. We get in some foam stickers. I think that these pieces are meant to be used on the back of the quadcopter and I'm not really sure what these two pieces are used for. Maybe you can just customize it and use it around the quadcopter. I'm not sure, but I'm going to ask the FRC. In addition, we get these two rubber ends for the antennas, two hex keys, an OSD controller, two extra screws, and finally, we are also getting one spare arm, which is a blast add-on. The Hawk 5, for example, also came with an extra arm and this quadcopter also comes with one. And I think this should become standard because sometimes you break an arm. So instead of ordering one in advance, getting one in the set is a great idea and will probably prevent some frustrations in the future. So now let's have a look on the quadcopter itself. First of all, it's featuring the new motors from Gepper C. These are the GR2306 2450 KV motors. These are definitely not cheap motors. The quality looks great and also they are not cheap. They cost about $22 a piece when you buy them separately. On the back, we can find an RCP Pagoda antenna from Gepper C as well. It is secured to the quadcopter using this 3D printed TPU mount. It also holds the RX antennas. On the bottom, because this is the Bind and Fly version, you can find the RX sound receiver. On the top you can find an XT60 battery connector, so this quadcopter is meant to be carrying the battery on top, but if you'd like you can also mount the battery on the bottom. On the top we've got the Runcom Swift 2 FEV camera, it's already wired up, and even the audio connector is connected to the flight controller, so it will be able to record and hear the audio during the flight. Moving on to the center, we can find the new Spent Tower all-in-one stack from Gepper C as well. On the top, we can find a 4-in-1, 40 ampere BLLES ESC. It supports up to D-Shot 600 and also up to 5S LiPo batteries. And finally, on the bottom, we can find the flight controller. It comes pre-flashed with Beta Flight 3.2.5. It's using the Omnibus F4 SD firmware. It also has an integrated VTX with a selectable output strength of 0, 25, 200 and 600 milliwatt. We've got this button on the bottom that will enable you to configure it, but even better, it supports smart audio. You can see the IRC Trump is enabled on UO3, so you'll be able to control the VTX for a beta flight OSD. Now I'm not going to go over the features of this frame because I've already reviewed it separately. So the next thing I'm going to do is to assemble everything together, which is basically just to put on the propellers and bind the quadcopter. After that, I'm going to go over beta flight settings, and head outdoors and test it with 3S, 4S and 5S batteries. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
that's around the next quarter. So overall I think that the Elegant KX5 is a very powerful machine. This motor has killed my batteries and I could only fly it for about 2 minutes using 1300mAh forest batteries. I think that the best setup for this quadcopter is 1500mAh forest batteries and using them you probably going to be able to fly them for about 3.5 minutes. In addition, while flying it using the 5S battery, I think that the quadcopter wasn't well tuned and you'll need to do some further PID tuning in order to get it to fly correctly using 5S batteries.
As you can see, I used the Gemfan 5055 propellers. Since both contents of my propeller bags had the same propellers with the same direction, so I couldn't test this quadcopter using the provided propellers. I think that this propeller should provide you with a longer flight time because these Gemfan propellers are a little bit more aggressive. In addition, maybe you saw during my first flight that I had some RSSI issues and also I lost the telemetry a few times during the flight. The reason for that was that one of the antennas of the RX cell receiver was disconnected and if it happens to you, make sure that both antennas are connected. And I also added a hitch ring on the RXSR receiver itself in order to prevent from happening. I also report this issue to GEPRC and hopefully they are going to take care of it. The video quality and also the VTX performed great. And as you can see in my VTX test, when it was set to 25 milliwatt, it was about 60 milliwatt. When it was set to 200 milliwatt, it was about 450 milliwatt. And finally, when the VTX was set to 600 milliwatt, I also measured it up to 850 milliwatt. On my test, it measured about 750. So this is going to be a problem for you if you want to use this quadcopter for races because you won't be able to set it to 25 milliwatt or to 200 milliwatt depending on the country you're racing in. But anyway, I don't think that you should get this quadcopter for racing. If you're looking for a lightweight setup, probably you should go with the Emacs Hawk 5 or with the new Batman 220 from AGLRC. This quadcopter is more suitable for freestyle. It has a very durable frame and very powerful motors. I didn't measure the top speed, but I think that this is a very fast quadcopter. And hopefully in the next week or so, I'm also going to take it outdoors for another test flight and I will put a GPS tracking device in order to measure its top speed. Finally, priced at about $270 for the Bind and Fly version, which is bundled with the FR Sky RXSR receiver. I think it's a great price and it will provide you with a great value for money. If you're going to combine the cost of all the parts separately, you're going to get probably two more than that. And of course, it saves you the time of building the quadcopter. Of course, building it can be very educative, but if you just want to get a quadcopter and head out to the field and fly it, this might be the perfect solution for you. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.